What is up RPG fans? In this video, I will be ranking my top 25 picks for the best RPG battle systems of all time. I did a video like this last year, which it's been it's crazy. It's been a year already, but um, I did a video like this last year and it was for the top 10 battle systems. I wanted to switch it up a little bit, uh, do 25 this time around. So we're going to get right into this with our first pick on this list. Also, there will be no honorable mention since 25 is plenty already. And yeah, so it's going to be, it's not just turn-based, it's not just action, like it's all the above. Lots of interesting picks on this list. Lots of things that people wouldn't usually say. So, and I've not played every RPG, so just realize that. And also, I probably have some interesting opinions. I'm probably missing some ones that I've never played before, and if you hate my list, respectfully disagree, as I would respectfully disagree with you. All right, let's get into this. Number 25, we've got the Xeno Gears battle system. Xeno Gears has an HD battle system like the SNES and PS1 Final Fantasy titles, but there is a big twist with this battle system. Every time you use an ability or normal attack, you can input button combos, and you can execute a variety of various, why did I say variety of various? You can execute various combo moves. This makes combat feel equally strategic and full of spectacle and action. Xeno Gears masterfully executes the ATB system to its finest. At least one of my favorites. I don't know if it's my favorite ATB. Yeah, it's not my favorite ATB battle system, but it's one of my favorites. Um, pretty much one of the best ATB battle systems of all time because you're basically just sabbing every single you attack and that is something special i personally love that addition to the game and it's just a great battle system. also there's mechs which you know we love mech combat like just who doesn't love mechs like come on guys if you don't like mechs tell me down below but mechs are really just awesome so yeah this is a really really good battle system so yeah yeah i think i've said enough all right, number 24 is going to be Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age. This is basically just a perfectly refined traditional turn-based battle system. Nothing special, but it's just like the peak, the pinnacle of traditional turn-based. The years of Dragon Quest games, they've perfected the formula. Each level, you get new spells and skill points, which allows you to truly customize your characters via awesome skill trees with multiple branching paths. Animations are phenomenal in this battle system. Uh, being able to switch characters out in battle, that's really cool. I also love that you can go 3D or 2D. You can have the old little box things that some people love, some people hate, or you can just go full on 3D. Uh, just that's the nature of Dragon Quest XI. There's also uh, pet powers, which are really cool. Uh, some insane ability combinations you can use with those. Um, my favorite thing to do in the game <laughs> is uh, give a status effect with Eric and then do six times damage. Or with dual wielding and divide doing whatever 64 times a day. Crazy. Um, I can't remember how much. Damage. It's not 64. Oh no, 64 is uh, in FF4 when you use darkness, refocuses. Great. 64. I don't know. It's like, what, 16 or whatever. Anyway, I digress. Uh, Another really cool thing, being able to speed up battles and run around the screen. Like Neither of those things were necessary, but they added them anyway. The running around is literally pointless, but for some reason it just makes it fun. I like that you can run around and do all that garbage. So, yeah, uh, you can back attack, I guess. But, you know, just feels right, all that stuff. So, yeah, I really love the battle system Dragon Quest XI. All right, in 23rd place, we have Final Fantasy X, which... It's my favorite turn-based battle system in the Final Fantasy series, well, at least the mainline Final Fantasy series, and it has a lot of depth and strategy to it. As one of the first games to feature the iconic conditional turn-based battle system, which is typically my favorite type of turn-based battle system, this game holds a special place in my heart, even though future RPGs perfected the formula and consequently ranked higher on this list. However, due to the awesome Overdrive, Aeon and Customize, and Sphere Grid systems, this game is still rather easily on this list. I would feel like a criminal not putting FF10 on this list. So, yeah. All right. 22nd place is a more 
untraditional pick, and that is Onanaki, which is third and final game of Tokyo RPG Factory, the creators of Lost Fear and I Am Sasuna. It's a top-down action RPG hack and slash game with a variety of 10 demons. Uh, even though the game itself was kind of bad, like, no offense, but everything outside of the combat is not the greatest, but the combat itself was really cool. Uh, with the 11 different characters, you've got a lot of different uh, strategies you can use in the action combat. I'll run through each of them really quick. There's Aisha, which is a speedy swordsman that you can use to dash away from attacks and do a ton of fast damage. There's Zolf, which is basically like a dragoon, a long range, like melee attacker, uh, jumping around to avoid attacks. There's Dia, who attacks from range with crossbow. There's Will, who's your heavy hitting tank who can, you know, end and all that stuff. Not all the characters can defend. There's Azana, a fast attacker that's all about inflicting debuffs and warping and draining HP. Zephyr, a weak ass speedy attacker with double jumping capabilities. There's a Lucica, who uses her fists to dish out fast AOD, AOE damage while utilizing barriers and devices for stat buffs. So that's nice. There's a Gavod, who does slow yet strong short range melee attacks and strong ranged attacks and utilizes versatile shield. There's Rygon, who is all about inflicting counterattacks and evasion which is interesting um especially like it's just really interesting to have a uh counterattack focused character in an action game i like that and then there's jex who you can assign any of the skills of previous demons and unleash powerful attacks so i really think that this game is an awesome battle system uh my fa my favorite 2d hack and slash game that i've played i know i haven't played all of them i'm sure there's some better ones out there onanaki awesome battle system Right, in 21st place, another one that is a bit more obscure, more interesting pick, and that is Blue Dragon Plus for the DS, sequel to 2007's, 2007, 2008, depends on, came out in 2008 in America, 2008's Blue Dragon for the Xbox 360, it's a sequel to that game, and it's a real-time strategy RPG similar to, uh, what's it called, Revenant Wings, Final Fantasy XII Revenant Wings, but you know, actually kind of good. And the, you can have like a billion characters at a time, 16 at once in battle, and you control all of them, which is really cool. You can also make your own characters in the form of Mecha Robos, which is awesome. And the world map in this game is really cool because it splits into multiple parties. And I'm liking like Final Fantasy Tactics, where you're just always your one party. And this, you split into multiple parties, and then that means that you have to... So it's really cool because you have to pick... Which characters you want to send with each party is a bit more strategic and there are mecha robots that can blow up your base on the map so you just got to make sure you know what you're doing on the world map as well i just i think it's really good this is my favorite rts rpg system i've played I, again i haven't played everything so laugh at me all you want rts fans but i really love blue dragon plus and regardless they'd probably make this list anyway because i'm a big blue dragon fan and just, yeah i love myself some blue Dragon, so Blue Dragon Plus is awesome. All right, in 20th place, this one isn't obscure, but it's probably controversial, or maybe not controversial, but polarizing. That's Final Fantasy 15. This, I'm not going to pretend this is, like, strategic. Like, honestly, you can buy a billion items, and it's so easy. Like, it's not e it's not hard, it's not really strategic, but it's just beautiful and engaging, and I got to have a guilty pleasure. Like, it's just... It looks amazing, and it's really cool to execute combos, and I love how each character plays, like, completely differently. Like, Noctis is fast, Warp strikes, like, Noctis just feels like FF15. Like, n I've never really played a character who feels anything like Noctis. Like, you're just doing crazy combos with different weapons, warping around, all that stuff. It's just really fun. Then, uh, and it's, like, techniques that you can use with the help of friends and link strikes and all that stuff so noctis is like his own thing like completely new combat i've never really seen anything like him before but then you can also play as the bros which really switches things up because you're playing as gladio it's kind of like dark souls or like star wars jedi type combat where you're focused on parries and strong melee strikes more like a star wars jedi game but kind of like that uh, prompto plays like just a third person shooter with a bunch of different weapons which is a really cool and ignis plays like a hack and slash with swift swift dodging with three different elements ice 
for medium AoE damage, fire for heavy single target damage, and lightning to zip from enemy to enemy for weaker but faster damage. This is not strategic, but it looks really pretty, and I love how different, like, oh, I want to go play a, I don't know, I'm bored, I want to play a third person shooter, oh, I don't have to even change what game I'm playing, I can just change to Prompto. Oh, I want some more like strategic, like parry focused combat. Oh, let's go to the Gladiolus. Oh, I just want to slash people and be completely brainless. Ignis. Like, I just think it's really cool that it looks really cool. Um, the enemies are fun. There's lots of big creatures in this game. And yeah, of the ones on my list, this is one of the more like, okay, really bright and like it's not too strategic. But you know, I really like it. So, Final Fantasy 15. And speaking of Final Fantasy 15 in 19th place, we've got a King's Tale Final Fantasy 15. I do actually like the combat in this game better. It's kind of like an old arcade game, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles beat 'em up type stuff, but it's really cool. It has a lot of Final Fantasy 15 esque things. We've got warp strikes, although they're different here. Instead of like actually warping, it's when you attack. If you click a melee attack and you're kind of far from an enemy, it'll just instantly like teleport you over there. So you're like always on the move. Uh, you've got light attacks, heavy attacks, shield bashes, mixes of them to do different combos. If you get long enough combos without even getting injured, you can summon one of Regis's three commandos. Why is the commandos? Comrades to dish out huge damage to big groups of enemies. Then if you summon all three, you can execute the ultimate move, the armature. So what this really does is it makes mastering the game super satisfying because the less you get hit, the more damage you do. And it's just, I really like that. Uh, on top of the summons and the melee strikes, you can also use magic, which fire causes overtime AOE damage. Um, also, it just like covers the field in fire. Lightning briefly stuns enemy enemies and ice slows down enemies for a while. So it's really fun. Like, oh, should I use fire, lightning, or ice? Like, I know it's not, it's really simple, but if you play it, and it's also a short game, so like it's not like it needed to be super in depth. But while you're playing it, it's an awesome beat 'em up game. Not too many crazy abilities, but just it's a lot of fun. Like I'm not gonna pretend it's not fun. It's just so good, and um, it's just such fast combat with the different like objectives you have to get and. I don't know. If you haven't played it, it sounds a little too simple, but it's just super. All right, in 18th place, which would be higher on this list if it weren't the easiest game I've ever played, and that's One Piece Odyssey. Um, but yeah, it's the easiest game ever, except for the challenge bosses. But other than that, it's really cool. It has a combat system called the Scramble Area Battle System. There's different battlefields divided in a multitude of different areas. By optimizing party member placement, opponents can be more effectively countered in a variety of ways. So let's say I, I don't know, I use an ability that knocks someone into a different group. Now that they're in that different group, when I use, I don't know, my ultimate move or something, it won't be wasted. It'll hit more enemies. Like, it's just really cool. It's kind of like, kind of think live live type. Not really, but uh, let's think. It's kind of like, I'm sure, I haven't played Wild Arms 4 and 5, but my guess is it's sort of like the Hex Combat system in those games. I'm sure that would be on my list if I had played those games. But it's kind of like what I've heard about that, so it's, yeah. Also, the accessory system in this game is really cool. Like, you, different accessories are different sizes, and you have to try to fit them all into the square, making, like, a little puzzle to try to figure out your best accessories, which is fun. There's also a lot of hilarious, like, one piece specific battle circumstances like you might fight a random battle and then it's like oh sanji can't hit girls in this battle because he's too much of a player so then you have to beat the battle without sanji hitting girls and then you get bonus experience and stuff and it's not like that's a groundbreaking thing but it's just in one piece odyssey they're always absurd objectives and it just makes things more fun and it's just really every battle feels different it's super fresh it's way too easy but, I don't know, it, if, if I could mod the game a bit, or if that DLC, I haven't played the DLC that came out, the DLC has a hard mode, that would be nice. I don't know, I don't think it does, if I remember correctly, and yeah, I don't know. If I modded the game and made it so it wasn't the easiest game ever, you know, maybe it would be like, it'd probably only be like two or three places higher, but 
probably not even it probably stayed just where it is honestly so i don't really love that it's super easy but you know what this is the type of game i don't know sometimes it's nice to play an easier more laid back all right, in 17th place, we've got the iconic Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. If you watched last year's video, this was at number one, and I'm looking back, and I was like, what the heck? I mean, I love Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, but I think that it's just a little too easy. Um, the first time you play it, it's not like way too easy, but it's just not a game where the combat is too replayable, because once you know how to break the game, it's a little too easy to break the game. Uh, power balance and stuff. And I know you can take that away. I'm not saying that the battle system is worse because of how easy it is to break, but it's just not my favorite battle system of all time because of it. That's why it's not like at number one anymore. It's just became a little bit too easy for me over time. But this is such a great battle system. The bosses are always fun. Timed attacks, the badge system, the partner system. Like it's super simple, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. But makes it really fun and once you get good at the game you're owning everything but it's it's just really fun guarding and super guarding like last time i played this game i had 10 health the whole game even in the pit of 100 trials or whatever and i just had so many badge points i was going crazy super guarding everything like that's i feel like paper mario thousand your door is at its best when you're either just starting out or when you're doing crazy runs and if you're doing crazy runs, they can be really fun. But I don't think that it deserved the number one spot on my last ranking. Now that I think about it, I'm like, really? I put it in number one? But it is still a fantastic battle system. Still love it to death, but it's not quite number one material for me. But if anyone thinks that it is, I am not going to say they're wrong because this is just really good. And I just wished it was a little more difficult. I wish I could. I mean, like double pain, but the problem with double pain is... Yeah, I can get hit for double damage, but if I super guard everything. Then... Basically, what I'm saying is that I've played Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door for too long that it's starting to get a little boring. That's why it's not in first place. But, or anywhere near the top, I guess. It's only in 17th. But that's why. Objectively, the first time I played through Thousand Year Door, it'd probably be like in the top five or something. But just as I've played it more and more, I've gotten a little bit more bored of it. So that required a big explanation. Now let's move on because that took forever. All right, this game, another Tokyo RPG Factory on this list. And I am just as surprised as everyone else. But yeah, there's two Tokyo RPG Factory games on this list. But in 16th place is Lost Sphere. I think this game is fantastic. Like, I think it's easily the best Tokyo RPG Factory game. I don't know, it just resonated with me a lot. I love the story, the characters, the battle system. Lost Fear, really love the game. And it's kind of a mix between combat, like Xenogears, Chrono Trigger, like Final Fantasy VII, an active time battle system. And it has like the fundamental ideas of I Am Set Suna. I know a lot of people have played I Am Set Suna, not as many people play Lost Fear. But there's uh, Sprit Knight, there's three types in this game. There's Skill Sprit Knight, which is action skills. Counter Sprit Knight, which kind of sucks, but it's kind of like Innate Sprit Knight, where like if you have enough momentum, then... It'll trigger an ability. But then there's Momentum Sprit Knight, which is what really drives this game to be so much better than I'm Setsuna. It's basically like every time you have an ability, you can link it to a Momentum Sprit Knight, and it's like the linked materia in Final Fantasy. And that adds a lot of extra depth into the game. There's also something like the Fluxation System, but this time it's called Sublimination. And if you use an ability enough then it starts to inherit the momentum sprint night. So let's say I'm using uh, Life Axiom, which is one of the momentum sprint nights I can use. If I equip Life Axiom to lock snipe ability, I keep using snipe, the snipe ability, and eventually Life Axiom goes on to the snipe ability, which means that even if I equip a new thing, the Life Axiom effect still triggers. So it's just a really cool concept you can really customize your abilities in a lot of different ways and yeah it's just super fun but the biggest thing that i love about this game is the way the mechs work i know a lot of people are like oh well, it's not like xeno gears or pain decos i'm like okay that's fine whatever i kind of get it but i think the mechs here are awesome because everyone's mech does something different and that's what makes it hugely awesome to me so each of the characters so kanada 
Uh, main character, you can use double, triple, and quadruple combos with other mechs. Lumino's Volco suit, it just uh, upgrades her skill Sprit Knight to make it better. Not too interesting, but hey, Lumino's a broken character, so it just makes it really fun to see huge damage. Uh, locks, every time you use an ability, it's like freaking sets or slots and stuff or whatever, and it just adds different buffs to the ability, so that's nice. It makes or basically just a more interesting version of Luminas, but sometimes it does absolutely nothing, so sometimes it's bad. Uh, Vans Volca Suit, uh, depending on what Sprit Knight you have equipped, it unlocks like different abilities, so I can't remember examples of the names, but let's say I had the Heal Sprit Knight, and the, these are not his abilities, but the Heal Sprit Knight and the Asuna Sprit Knight, and now I have Heal Asuna, like that's obviously not what it is, but something like that. So the different Think... It just like once you have enough of certain abilities, it gives you new abilities to use. My favorite one was like Excalibur or something. I don't know. But basically, depending on what you have equipped, you can get different new abilities with his Volco suit. Uh, Oberos, it gives you the top tier elemental magic. Galdras, it allows you to use three consecutive abilities. Sheras, it allows you to use two consecutive abilities. But. If you use two correct abilities, it can trigger a third ultimate ability. So it's kind of kind of better than Galdra's, but also kind of not, depending on what you use. Uh, Deonto's Volco Suit uh, is just a skill set of abilities. It's not dependent on anything like Vaughn's, but it's kind of like uh, just buffing abilities, debuffing abilities, and healing abilities. So yeah, honestly, Lost Fear is just awesome and oh i forgot to mention another big part you can move around in battle and depending on where you move it changes who you hit and stuff and that just is a lot of fun because you can always position yourself to like you can do crazy positionings where you're able to hit every enemy even though you sh should probably not be able to but i always love to try to like cheat the game with some crazy position so yeah that was really fun all right 15th place is going to be an interesting one because Technically, I'm kind of cheating and saying like 12 different games, but it's kind of kind of cheating. But this is Tales of Vesperia and others. What I mean by that is Tales of Vesperia is my favorite of them. But basically, every older Tales game would fall in the 15th, split, 15th place on this list. Like 1995 to 2008 Tales games, I think that's where they go. Like pretty much all of them. Maybe not all of them. I don't know. Maybe... Tales of Fantasia for the GBA is not, not making it on here, but I think Vesperia is just the most refined one. Rebirth is up there too. I like Rebirth. Looks really cool. Uh, different stuff. I like Symphonia a lot too because the way the lines work, it's like not free run, but you still have some extra little, you know, you can still move around and stuff. But I think Vesperia is my favorite of the older ish ones. And yes, I do call. I think Zillia really brought in a new age of Tales games. I think the Tales of Vesperia, the Fatal Strike system, makes it my favorite. And, oh no, Grace is brought in the new age. My bad, my bad. But I just really think that, um, this, yeah, just the whole Tales series has so many good battle systems. And I think Vesperia is the best of the older ones. Yeah. All right. In 14th place, we've got my favorite Mario and Luigi game, Mario and Luigi Dream Team. And the reason I originally definitely had this lower than Thousand Year Door, but I think the thing that makes Mario and Luigi Dream Team special is, first of all, it's easily the hardest Mario and Luigi game. And there's a ton of rough bosses that you have to get really good at to be able to beat. So that's really cool. The enemy design here is top notch. And I just, I wanted to put one of the Mario and Luigi games, but to me, Mario and Luigi Dream Team was a definitive pick. It's harder. It has, I really love the whole dreamy Luigi thing because in the normal world, you've got like high HP enemies that you're beating up with Mario and Luigi. And then in the dream world, you're beating up hordes of enemies with just Mario. But every time you attack, dreamy Luigi's come and attack all the, it's just really fun. And I think that Mario, Mario and Luigi Dream Team is my favorite Mario and Luigi game, which is kind of controversial, but this is my favorite mario and luigi game and i wanted mario and luigi to be on this list so yeah here we are all right in 13th place we have got final fantasy tactics a2 grimoire of the rift yes i just said that i liked a2's combat better than the originals and advance that is because i like the species and i like how there are like 
56,000 jobs in this game. There's so many different things to do, so many skills to learn. My biggest complaint, the only reason I don't have it higher on this list is because as much as I love tactical games, some of the battles last like 40 minutes in this game. I don't have time for every battle to be that long. But other than that, this is a really, really good battle system. And I like it better than the original tactics. I think the original tactics just had too many, like, I don't know. I feel like it, I know a lot of people don't like, I mean, a lot of people like it because it's like imbalanced and it's kind of funny and like breakable, but I just liked tactics A2 better because I think the difficulty was more like fair across the board. I mean, I like that tactics is hard, but I really just think that this game is more polished than tactics, and I like that in a sense, and there are just so many abilities. That's really it. The abilities, the species, and the jobs is really why I have this above tactics. Tactics, advance. Also, I do kind of like the judge system in specific circumstances. I think it makes battles more fun. I know some people hate it, but when you've got some objective to complete in battle or some restriction it makes it different than the last battle and I, every, if every battle is the same then i'm not too interested so i kind of like the restrictions but i get why people hate it it's fair enough whatever all right in 12th place we've got nino kuni wrath of the white witch a battle system that like final fantasy 15 is incredibly controversial some people love it some people think it's the worst thing ever and i think it's great um but i would really want to I, I really want to put this higher but the problem is the ai has got to be the worst thing on the whole planet like it is some of the worst crap ever but the battle system itself is phenomenal so if the ai was fixed this could probably be like number two for me, number three but so basically it's not like full action combat but it kind of you, like you run around and stuff but you still got like to input commands so it's not like i think it's a really cool blend of turn-based and action combat because it's like i think slower paced action combat like you're not doing crazy combos and stuff but you're still running around and stuff and there are a lot of fun familiars a lot of cool stuff and i, I i'm a big fan of monster catching games but i kind of hate pokemon because battle system sucks and pokemon is so boring are pokemon fans but i think that this is a good balance of like just lots of fun stuff and once you get in the nitty gritty like there's so many crazy things like familiar swapping right for you an enemy mastering counter attacks um mastering planetary signs and weaknesses and just so many things you can do in this battle system it's just really layered and the more you play the game I've played this game through like four times or something and it just gets the battle system better every time. Now the AI is so awful. Like freaking Dragon Quest 4 on the NES had better AI than this. That's just like why does Esther always run up to enemies and hit for two damage? Stupid harp. Why does Swain always throw out his level one cover club? Literally in the third position of and forgetting to defend, like Come on, guys. I know AI aren't supposed to be perfect, but they can do better than that. Anyway. I'd pay like 100 bucks for a second copy of this game that had fixed AI, but as it is, nope. And yeah, it would be in the top three. No, it's a really fun battle. Great hybrid between. All right, time for another controversial one. I know, I'm controversial. 11th place, Paper Mario the Origami King. A lot of people hate this battle system, but I think it's fantastic. I wish there was like a customization system or something, like a badge system for partners. Because as it is, there's like no customization. The accessories are... But, but, the actual puzzle combat is really cool. The normal battles are kind of fun. They're just like mini puzzles. Um, I get that people don't love those, but there's also the action combat. It happens sometimes with the macho enemies, which is fun enough. It's really simple, but it's also kind of fun. But the big, the big, big thing here is the bosses. Bosses are so fun. They're so fun because, like, 
they're just amazing. Like, some of the best bosses in any game I've played. Not the best. Like, if you've ever... You haven't played Origami King. Here's the idea. Mario's in the middle when you're fighting enemies. And enemies are on the outside, and you've got to line them up to beat the enemies up. But for boss fights, the boss is in the middle. And you have to use, like, arrows and different attacks to try to... I'm going to have some gameplay up on the screen. You can probably see what I'm talking about. But you've got to, like, make a path to the enemy. And then it's just so cool. Like, it's hard to explain in words, but I'm having it up on the screen. So, yeah, it just... It's so cool. And all the bosses are super cinematic. Sometimes they're usually really dumb things. Like, I don't know, you're fighting a stapler or something. That makes it even more fun. It's just, it's epic. It's really. All right, in 10th place, we've got Live Alive. And Live Alive is another one that some people hate, but I think it's awesome. It, it's not. The thing is, I love grid-based RPG tactical stuff, but I don't have time for 40-minute boss battles. I mean, 40-minute normal battles i do have time for 40 minutes but i don't want to be fighting battles for so long but in live alive you got the seven by seven grid that you're moving around and stuff and it makes for tactical battles but quick tactical battles that are only a few minutes also every ability that people get is so fun especially like the uh chinese characters uh they're they've got some crazy moves uh the ninja and stuff they've just got so many moves that Completely affect tiles differently. It's just super fun, super innovative, crazy thing for the SNES. Um, some crazy optional bosses that require like mastery of the boy fish and the mammoth king. Super fun. So overall, size grid based battle system, awesome battles, and 32 playable characters with completely unique abilities. Live live is an awesome battle. All right, in ninth place, we've got my favorite game of all time, but not my favorite battle system of all time. That's Lost Odyssey. This is just a really good traditional turn-based battle system with an element of CTB. So in FF10, for example, it's always CTB. Like, you see all the moves going, you know, all that stuff. Like, on the right, it's like, this is going to use quick hit, and then Riku's going to use mix, and then, you know, like that. This game, you select all your abilities at the beginning of a turn, like in FF1 or FF2 or FF3, Dragon Quest or whatever. But it still shows the order on the top. So it really is a traditional turn-based battle system, but with that element that you still get to see what's really happening. So I do like that a lot. Um, that's cool. It's a really good battle system. You can have like 30 skills on each character at a time skill link system and the ring quick time events are a lot of fun there's just so many cool abilities like this is this is i said that dragon quest 11 had like the perfect traditional turn-based battle system this has the perfect new traditional like a newer version i i really like well i guess dragon quest 11 came out afterwards but you get what i'm saying because that just keeps the whole like dragon quest but really, Lost Odyssey is a great spin on the track. All right, in eighth place, we've got an action RPG that a lot of people say is just a generic action RPG, but I think it's not generic, and I think it's really fun. That is Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. It's just got a lot of fun stuff. Once you get into the DLC with the different martial methods and you're throwing around Higgledy, it's just super fun. Uh, six... Six playable characters. Each character can equip four weapons at a time. There's light attacks, heavy attacks, dash attacks, spinning slices, ranged attacks, ranged dash attacks, charged ranged attacks, and aerial attacks, both melee and ranged. There's, uh, yeah, there's all that. And it's super fun. The Higgledies are fun. The martial methods are fun. Like, all that jazz. And there's also a second battle system with skirmishes. The real-time tactical skirmish that you do with these little be guys and it's fun and cute and you get all these different commanders of different skills beating up things like a freaking clash of clans or something like it's just i love nino kuni 2 analysis bosses are almost as good as the first game awesome kingmaker bosses absolutely yeah it's just it's a lot of fun and i don't think it really feels all that you know samey to action rpgs because 
zing gauges and higgledies and having three weapons at a time like all just new i think it's a really cool action rpg it's not my favorite action rpg of all time but i think it amazing combat especially if you play an expert actually die if you're playing in normal mode it kind of sucks but if you're playing in expert mode it's really tactical like it, you have to know your normal mode you just brain dead kill everything dynasty playing playing an actually difficult mode and it's really funny all right in seventh place we have got the hardest game that i've played because i probably just suck i know it's not that hard compared to like what are some of the crazy old what's that game it's like you have like oh the seventh saga that's what i'm thinking like that type it's not like that hard but it is probably the hardest game on this pretty easily anyway octopath traveler 2 apparently i just suck at octopath traveler because everyone over here is beating galdera on like two minutes and i have a hard time beating. but you know that's fine. I don't have to be good at a battle system like it. Octopath Traveler 2 takes Octopath Traveler 1's foundation, adds so many cool new bit like EX skills, innate abil uh everyone's innate abilities. You've got got it all. Like all the crazy stuff. Uh, latent powers, like so many cool moves. Uh the day night cycle even plays into it. Um all the jobs, of course. It's just so all the different characters breaking and boosting and all that stuff. Like I'm sure Octopath Traveler, you've probably played it. It's one of the less obscure. But you know Octopath Traveler. If you're an RPG fan, you've heard of it. Like breaking and the boosting, the jobs, the all the innate abilities, the skills, the different character skills. Like it's awesome. So good. All right, in sixth place, we've got Eternal Sonata, which this game is insane. The only reason I don't have it even higher is because each character gets like, some of the characters only get like two abilities. Whole game. Really? Really, guys? We have like two abilities? Okay, I think four. Yeah, Crescendo and Serenade only get four abilities. Actually, it feels like it. Um, And that is annoying. But everything else is amazing. It is a mix between turn-based and action. You get your turn, and then you have like 10 seconds to do everything you want on your turn. You run around, you beat people up, you heal, you do all that stuff. And it is so fun. Like, it's amazing. And building up echoes, uh, it's basically the more times you hit an enemy, the more powerful your abilities use an ability, it'll be more powerful. The best thing to do is like get like 60 echoes. I don't think you need like 48 echoes or whatever and then with like 0 0.01 seconds left on your timer doing the optimal damage you execute your op ability and it's just super fun. like it just and with the party level system throughout the game the battle system changes it up a little bit and it just even the like main character though only gets like 10 abilities and a lot of them are derivative so i do think that i probably would have this above It'd probably be in second place, honestly. Yeah, second place. I would have number one and number one. No spoilers yet. Colonel Sonata, number two, and Eno Kuni, Wrath of White, which it were for, you know. Depends. Having more abilities and stuff. But there's just not that much abilities, and there's, like, no customization outside of combat. So as much as the battle system is amazing, the skills themselves and stuff aren't as good, but that's still doesn't mean doesn't deserve it. and all the characters are crazily different like allegretto is all about fast super powerful sword strikes uh beat is long distance uh echo building uh, polka is all about like lower attacks and healing frederick is all about echo building and it makes more sense if you actually play it but it's just super all right, fifth place, my favorite CTB battle system. Nope, my second favorite CTB battle system. Uh, that's Blue Dragon. Earlier I was talking about Blue Dragon Plus, how I love Blue Dragon. And this is where I'm going to talk about how I love Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon is my favorite job system of any RPG I've played. And that's because you get like actually more than two skill slots. And 
it just has so many fun things like the shadow classes the accessories are awesome the charge system is one of my favorite things in the video game battle animations are sick as heck especially the corporeal attacks they look so amazing bro not even final fantasy 15 hit me as corporeal i mean okay fine final fantasy 16 boss fight probably cool. but like that's a high bar and um the encounter circle and monster fights genius pb battle system so fun you play this game in hard mode it's amazing once you fight the super bosses in hard mode it's a lot of fun or impossible mode like it's super good and i wish i could put this and the next few in first place but i'm not gonna do that. it's too many good games but yeah blue dragon favorite job system fa one of my favorite ctv battle systems is just all right, in fourth place, this is probably going to piss off half of you because some people wouldn't consider this an RPG, but I'm going to consider it an RPG because it is like Dark Souls. And people consider Dark Souls RPG. So I'm going to consider this an RPG because it's basically Dark Souls in different skin. That is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I am a huge Star Wars fan. This is some awesome action combat. If you don't want to count this as an RPG, fine. This is what I would do. Get rid of this, and in 25th place, move everything down in one slot, and in 25th place, put Lufia 3 The Legend Returns. Then we're all happy. Boom. So if you want to skip forward a minute and a half or however long it takes me to talk, you don't want to consider Star Wars Jedi Survivor an RPG. Fine with me. You've got Lufia 3. But for those of you who want to agree with me and consider this an RPG, basically a Souls burn, Souls Born, and yeah, stick with me. So there's five different lightsaber styles, single bladed, double bladed, dual wielding, single blades, cross guard, and blaster blade hybrid, push, pull, slow, and control force abilities. It's so fun. There's tons of fun enemies. Uh, reflecting attacks is super fun. Like if you like Star Wars, this is just like crack cocaine. To you. Anyway, I have no idea what crack feels like, but this is one of the closest things to crack for a Star Wars fan. Like this is just amazing. You like Star Wars, this is this is it. Like this is what I can't wait for the third game. If they add any more lightsaber styles, if they add like Dooku, oh wait, no, they if they add freaking Pong Krell double wielding double bladed, I'm going to heaven. Like I don't even need a I have transcended and okay. Alright, let's move to the third place spot. I told people a minute and a half. Alright. Third place is Chained Echoes, the best indie game ever made, and I'm not even, like, this is not me being a nostalgia blind person who's like, oh, it's good because people said it was like Chrono Trigger. No, it's good because it's freaking good, and I like this game better than Chrono So, this game is amazing. The difficulty's good, um, it's like pretty, oh, a pretty hard game at the beginning, it gets easier once you start to like, but... After every battle, all your HP and TP are restored, which means every battle you can just full-on go, and it's awesome. Every character is completely different. Like, it's crazy how different every character feels for a turn-based game. You've got Glenn, which is your all-around, like, attacker, uh, attacker, debuff, like, your main character. Basically, think Tidus. Then you've got Victor, who's, like, your buffer different healing abilities, different regen abilities, all that stuff. You've got Sienna, your thief that can hit for really crazy high damage if you increase her uh, critical hit chance. The Thraz, who's like a summoner who like summons swords and stuff. Like he doesn't even summon beasts. He just summons swords and stuff, which is cool. Uh, you've got uh, Len, which is so broken. She just stabs people with elemental spear. Everything dies. Uh, you've got Rob, who's all about inflicting status ailments, which are good in this game because you can use them against bosses. Kind of crazy, but um, yeah, poison and venom, toxin, poison and toxin, and all that jazz. Paralyzed, sleep. He's got it all, and good job of it. Uh, you've got Magnolia, who's like a random magic caster. Let's be honest, he's still fun. Raphael, who's a magic tank. Eagle, who's a normal tank. Got oh, 
Oh, Micah, who does all the damage. Uh, just a big, like a huge hitter at the cost of like eight, like a glass cannon monk type. That actually does have combo moves. And then there is my good old, uh, what? what? Oh, Tom, Tom K. Tom K is the blue mage of the group. Like there's so many good. Hopefully I didn't forget any characters. I think I got them all. But it's just super fun. And they all have ultra moves. They all have completely different abilities. And the leveling system's awesome because you don't actually level up. But every time you beat a boss, you kind of level up. And it just makes so you can't just grind. You have to actually... Um, yeah, and the overdrive meter makes things super fun with the neutral overdrive and overheat. I'm sure you can guess what those mean. But yeah, it just changes neutral you just do your thing overdrive you do more damage to the enemies and overheat the enemies do more damage to you it doesn't sound like a big addition to the game but it completely shifts how the game works and like it's amazing but matthias linda my man went even overboard and went crazy and put mechs in the game too the mechs it's like a completely different battle system for your party members suit up in combat as mechs completely different abilities and customization completely different turn-based battle system the overdrive meter works completely differently up these huge enemies and mechs it's so good i love this game's combat but it can't get quite in the top one or two number two is you really didn't think i was going to include the old tales game without including the new the number two is all the games from 2008 and after except maybe tales is austere but it's just amazing. Tales of Graces, Tales of Zillia, Tales of Zillia 2, Tales of Rise, Tales of Berseria. Maybe Tales of Zestiria. They all have amazing combat. So fun. Uh, Zestiria is a little more clunky. Yeah, but still good. But really, it's all about this. But my favorite is Tales of Zillia 2. And that is because I love the characters. I love the link system. I, I know the Graces has all the idols and stuff and that's really cool but i love the lilium orb and the shop system system so i like tales of zillia 2 a little better but tales of zillia 2 then tales of grace is probably then tales of rise but i just love new or tales games and that's the guy gets in second place but number one on this list is final fantasy 12 the zodiac age gambits are the best that's ever been made gambits are i'm okay too good about gambits but the bosses in this game are awesome gambits are awesome all that jazz if if it was normal final fantasy 12 it probably wouldn't even be on this list especially since it adds so much to be able to speed up the but gambit system is so fun even playing without gambits is fun so many different abilities different jobs for combat like you've played final fantasy 12 and you've really got into it like the first like hour but you really get into it, fight those crazy hunts and all that stuff. Like, this game gets amazing. Like, try fighting. Tell me that fighting Yzmat and Omega Mark, whatever, judges is not fun. Like, it's crazy. I mean, it, it's, it's, I don't know. The, the battle system. Gambits are like freaking computer programming if statements. It, it's just, I get if you don't like Final Fantasy XII. It's a love it or hate it type of thing. I love it favorite battle system thank you all for watching this video if you enjoyed this video please be sure to like subscribe and check out other videos i'll have my last year version linked at the end of the video it's completely different which is kind of funny i hadn't even played like half these games um yeah completely different but it's still a pretty decent list if you want to see where it, i changed things up it was a top 10 even though it ended up pretty much being a top 16 with all the honorable mentions I had. so you know do what you want. You don't want to watch it, whatever. But if you want to watch it, see how it all changed up, go ahead. I'll see you back next year for another battle system ranking, and hopefully we get some new battle system. Maybe we won't. Maybe it'll be the exact same, but I doubt it since I'll at least have moved some. Maybe I'll finally understand the AI in you. Anyway, thank you all for watching this video, and have a fantastic day. Peace out, RPG. Fans, RPG nerds, RPG geeks, whatever you want me to call you. A lot of people want different things. Some people want fans, some people want nerds, some people want people, some people want 
Have a great day.